Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be debunking the scariness of a PhD Viva. So I'm going to be going through exactly how you want to prepare for your PhD Viva examination. So I finished my PhD at the University College London um, and in the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology. And when I finished my PhD I was fortunate enough to have no corrections. Um, I think I had one spelling mistake actually to be <laughs> precise um, and my examiners absolutely loved everything I spoke about during the Viva examination and I truly think that a lot of it came down to the things that I prepared and the points that I made during that particular sitting with the examiners um, but I'm here to say that First and foremost, there's nothing to be worried about and everything I'm going to mention in today's video, all eight points are things that you probably already know, you're probably already super confident about and to remember the fact that you are the expert of this thesis. The examiner is doesn't know as much as you know with your particular thesis. And the minute that that clicked in my mind, I was no longer scared or worried or anxious about what was to come. The moment that I realized I can question them and they won't know what I am going to say. Um, so, <laughs> you know, they're just there to have a discussion. It's a discussion. It's an academic discussion between the academics, the examiners and you the academic so ultimately there's nothing to be worried about and i think there's one thing that you take away from today's video it's there's nothing to be worried about you've got this um of course there are ways, ways to prepare and that's what i'm going to be going through in today's video okay the first thing that i did was to firstly read my thesis but read it in a printed out version but not in your typical printed out version the thick fat version but rather in a version that is slightly condensed so what I did was because my thesis was quite a lot of pages I, I believe it was like 200 pages long um, what I did was I printed it out in a version that has four pages per a four page now I mean this really depends on your eyesight my eyesight is pretty good so I can see it really well um, you might want to print two per page but I did this so that I can have my thesis accessible to me wherever I go so I started preparing for my examination I would say like a few weeks before um, but I really went hardcore maybe like two weeks before I would say so I wanted a version that I could kind of like slip into my bag read on the tube and you know lugging a thesis that's 200 pages around with you is just really not feasible um, so what I did was printed it out and it gave me something to carry and hold and just kind of scribble in a very accessible way so that was my first top tip that I did the second thing is to start reading your thesis and this I'm going to call the first read so the first read of your thesis needs to start to happen pretty quickly because if your thesis is as long as mine it might take a while but whilst doing this, you want to think about certain questions and certain points that they might be asking you. So whilst reading, you want to constantly be saying to yourself, could this be a question? So I've mentioned a method here. Could they ask me to justify it? I've mentioned a particular paper that's really important for the research question or for the gap. Could they ask me to justify you know why I've selected that paper could they ask me so constantly having that question of what could their question be is really important when you're doing that first read so some things you want to look out for are things like recurring literature what papers come up again and again any key methods that you're mentioning and that you're using any really important keywords justifications for methods or any approaches and most importantly any statistical analysis that you use so if you're mentioning that you've got p numbers or t tests or anything that you're doing to do with stats you need to be able to justify that you need to be able to say why your data fits that particular t test why is your data appropriate to be used for that particular uh, statistical test that you used because they are likely going to ask you that um, it's not good enough to say my supervisor told me to do it you need to know why your data suits it um, and the likelihood is they don't 
Like they don't have the answers. So if, you, if you're confident enough to say, well, my data is continuous, non-continuous, etc., and that suits this t-test, they'll be like, yeah, cool. They don't actually, you know, they don't have your, your data in front of them. So it's more about knowing, being confident and giving an answer um, than expecting them to ask you specific nitty gritty details, which they don't have time to do in that particular sitting. So more specifically, your examiner expects you to show a critical analysis of your own work and that of others, appreciate the limitations of the methods um, and also the results obtained by yourself, but also others that you've mentioned in your thesis know the broad conclusions of your thesis and how they support the gap in literature and then also how they conflict or add to previous work again that you've mentioned um, and also to know the concepts and the recent developments in your subject so i'll talk about that a bit more um, in a second bear these things all in mind when you're reading your 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 thesis for that first read so that first read is probably going to be the long and the slowest the longest and the slowest process just because you you are looking out for quite a few things and you'll see like in my thesis what i've done is i've just scribbled loads of things down i put question marks i've used highlights i've i've got like tabs all down the side and it's actually this is a really memorable document for me because it really shows me and reminds me of how much work and effort went into reading it for the first time um and it really is quite like significant um, and I'm never going to get rid of this. Okay, so now you've read your thesis, the third thing you want to do is move on to literature. So, you know, over the course of your PhD, you read a, a ton of literature. You want to pick out the main ones that come up again and again in your thesis. So at this point, you're no, you're no longer searching for new papers. You're looking at your thesis and you're saying, what have I mentioned in my thesis um, kind of to do with the gap in literature, to do with important data that you might have um, inferred from or used or um, contested against or added to. Any research that you've mentioned in your thesis, anything that you've mentioned in your thesis, that, that means that you've read that paper and you've understood it. So if you've cited or referenced anything in your thesis, that is a, a space to say, for your examiner to say, well, um, you've mentioned this paper, what, what, you know, what relevance does this have to your work? And you can't say, I don't know, right? So you need to make sure that if you've mentioned a paper multiple times, I would say anything more than like five times, make sure you know what that paper is about for the most part. To do this, you can just read the abstract or you can just kind of get a quick gist of how it relates to your work if you don't already know. And you probably, probably already know this, but just keep, bear that in mind that they can ask you about the work of others if you've mentioned it in your paper and if it seems to be significant enough that you've mentioned it enough times for them to have pointed it out. But on the theme of papers and literature, you want to also do a quick search, and I'd probably do this like the day or two days before your, your examination. Do a quick search on any new or recent papers that have you know, been published since you wrote your thesis. So like my thesis I wrote in August of 2017, and that's like the last final version. So I probably actually wrote it in like June or July. And my Viva was in November. So between you know, June to November, a new paper could have been very easily have been published um, that adds to my field. And it's not good enough for me to say, I didn't know that um, because you're still, you know, you're still in that PhD program and that examiner might actually be someone who may have published that work or might have a collaborator have, that has published that work and will be excited to speak to you about what you think about this new development. And if you say, I don't know, that doesn't really, like it's not space, like, you know, it's not enough for them to disqualify you obviously, but it doesn't look good if you haven't researched the latest kind of upcoming publications in your, in your field. One way of doing this really easily is just asking your supervisor, hey, have you seen any recent papers that you think um, I, you know, might come up? And I'm sure he or she will help you with that. 
The fourth is to take some time to reread and relook at the work of your supervisor and also the examiners. So there's actually a template that I have created for preparing for your PhD. And the last page here, you can see I've included a bit of a summary for what to kind of pick out about the examiners. So your examiners are coming as experts in their field. And there's a reason why you selected them. Maybe they are aligned um, or have some kind of common knowledge with your methods that you use or maybe like they're interested in the protein that you're working on but they obviously have some sort of interest or similarity or likeliness to your work and your research so you need to kind of try to figure out and try to uh, kind of find out what angles they might be coming from. So one of my examiners um, had a background more in uh, the physics side of what I was looking at. And my PhD was very much biology based, but there was a little bit of like biophysics, a bit of like migration movement, that kind of thing. So I had a, I had a thought and I had a, you know, we had a, we had an idea that maybe he might be asked, he might come and ask me about the motility side of things. And there was a little bit in my thesis that I didn't actually do and my like co-collaborator did and I mentioned that there. And he actually did ask me about it. And had I not thought that he'd be interested in his own background, I wouldn't have prepared for it. So it's really important to think about, right, what are their interests? What's their research interest? And how could they try to find a question that they could ask about their stuff, but with my thesis? So like I said, with the um, template that I've designed, that last page really prompts you and really makes you think about the different ways that your examiners and your work could link. The fifth step is to now do a second read of your beautiful thesis. So you've done your first read, you've read your literature, you've, you've checked up on your, your, you know, your supervisor and your examiners, and now you need to go back to the literature again and do a second read. But in the second read, what you want to do is now focus more on each chapter. So you want to start from you know, your introduction, focus on your introduction and say, right, what is the main kind of gist of this introduction? What am I saying? What is my gap? What am I trying to justify? Um, and summarize that. And again, I've got chapter summaries for each of the chapters um, within my Viva preparation templates. Um, and each chapter, there are slightly different questions that you want to ask, uh, or you may be asked as well. So I've also included those in each of those chapter summaries as well. So like when you're in the methods, you want to think more about justifying, like why did you choose that cell type? Why did you choose those participants? Why did you choose a group of a hundred and not a thousand? Why did you have an N number? Like, you know, you need to, really be able to justify everything and those are the kind of questions that they are going to ask you again it's a discussion they just want to know why did you choose a hundred not a thousand then once i had completely exhausted my thesis and literature i then started thinking about potential more general questions that they could ask me so things like why you know what did you enjoy about your phd they do ask you those questions what are you doing next um, what are your career goals? Uh, what did you enjoy about, about this lab? Or what was your favorite technique? And like just general questions that you probably don't prepare for. Um, they do ask you this because like I said, it's a discussion and they actually want to get to know you and they actually want to like make it a pleasurable experience. So I've got a, a list of questions as well within the template that, um, like I said, I will leave the link for it down below that you can see. And these are all questions that are a bit more generalized and that they usually ask at the start or they'll ask it um, towards the end. The seventh step is that I've now done all of my reading, I've, I've you know, prepared as much as I can. There's not really much more you can do, but you do want to practice public speaking because you are speaking in front of an audience. In the UK, you usually just have your examiners there, your internal and your external examiners. Sometimes you may, be ha you may have your supervisor there as well for, for whatever reason, but usually it's just two. However, in Europe, um, as in like in other like Germany for example or Spain um, their via PhD or even France I know for France for sure um, their PhD virus tend to be more of a public event so they'll have like their family and friends in the audience and it'll be like in a little seminar room and they'll have like their colleagues there and their lab friends and everything and they'll present their work and they'll be asked questions by the audience so it's more of a presentation as opposed to 
what ours feels like in the UK, which is more of an examination. Um, so either way, you're speaking to an audience. So you want to pra practice public speaking. So what I'd, rep what I'd recommend is doing a bit of a mock fiver. So if you can grab a few people, ideally those that are in your field. So I probably, I did it with my lab, um, my lab group. So one of the meetings that we have, like I think we, have, we used to have meetings every week. For one of the meetings, I was like, can I present my work? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I presented my work, I did a quick, I think it was like a 15, 20 minute presentation, presented my work and I was like, ask me questions, critique it, just be as harsh as possible. And I got as many tips as I could about how I presented my images or like what I said. I got some good question like prompts. They made me think about certain things, which was really helpful because um, they're not my examiners, right? So it's good to get that advice beforehand. And then last but not least, like you've done the hard work now, there's really nothing more you can do. You're gonna, you'll be absolutely fine. Like you're, you're gonna be able to do this. The last thing is prepare the things that you need for the day. So I took this with me, of course, um, but I also printed out a few extra pages for things. So I think I've got them in here actually. So I think I printed out like, a few pages within like my discussion that had a diagram that I thought that they might ask me about um because like you know they're not the experts in your field and I keep having to say this because I think we think they're, they're testing us they don't know everything that we know you know as a student you're the one that knows it so they ultimately need to be able to uh, justify um, and, and ask you those questions. So I, 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 there was, I think there was a diagram in one of my, in my thesis that I thought they'd, they might ask me about. So I printed it out in, in big, so I'm not like flapping around with this little thing. And I think they did ask me actually, and I was like, oh, here, here it is. <laughs> and I gave it to them to see, and I think they were quite impressed by that. And um, even things like extra data, if you have like a graph that you really wanted to fit in, but it wasn't relevant for your thesis, but you think they might ask you about it, print it out. Um, I would say no more than like five sheets of paper because imagine you've got 50 sheets of paper and you're now flapping around trying to find the right one. <laughs> um, no more than five, okay? Just so it's really obvious like what you have and what you want to talk about. Um, yeah, that's my, my top tip. Um, but yeah, I hope that you found this helpful. Um, it really, like I said, it's go into the mindset that I'm going to be fine. It's just a discussion. They're just engaging, engaging in an academic you know, discussion, they're not testing me. If I've got to this stage and my supervisor has allowed me to sit in front of these two examiners, like, you know, surely they wouldn't allow you to sit in front of these examiners if you were, you know, if you weren't going to pass. Um, so you, you will do absolutely fine. Um, just a few things to prepare for. This preparation, you could really do it in, I would say a minimum of 10 days. So spending like one day working on the thesis, um, and then kind of a few days on each chapter, then looking at literature, going back to the thesis, preparing like some questions and you're good to go. Um, 10 days, I would even say five days, really. It depends on the gap, I think as well, on how, you know, how far ago you wrote your thesis. But if it was not too long ago, then you could do it in five to 10 days, absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, I'll leave a link for this template in my description down below if you want to grab it. It's um, quite, quite extensive. It allows you to really think quite in, in depth about the different parts of your thesis. And um, I'd highly recommend, like I said, printing out your thesis as well. So you have a nice copy that you can just run around with too. Um, helps so much. Um, any other tips, please let me know in the description, uh, in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.